Welcome to the How to Animate Beginners course. I'm James, a veteran animator of 12 years, and I'm going to teach you everything you need to know about how to become a character animator. This step-by-step -step lesson is tailored for beginners, so all of the project files will be provided so you can follow along. In this class, I'll cover the basics of Autodesk Maya and teach you some of the principles of animation. Doing these exercises will give you a strong foundation moving forward into the more advanced classes. So here we are inside of Autodesk Maya. You're able to download this from autodesk.com if you go to the student section. Um, so I'd like to quickly run through Maya and the basic navigation controls and basically how to start. Uh, if you already know this, then please feel free to skip ahead. The first thing is navigation. So this is your viewport and this is where you view all the 3D assets inside the program. Uh, you're able to rotate around objects by holding Alt and left clicking and then dragging around. If you hold Alt and right click you're able to zoom in and out like so. And if you hold Alt and middle mouse button you're able to move up and down like so. So this gives you the full range of movement. So up on the left here we've got our movement controllers. So if we select our one of our controllers here and click on this it gives us the ability to manipulate these handles. Uh, if you select this one, it gives you rotate options, so you're able to click and drag to rotate the object. Down the bottom here is the timeline, and you're able to click and drag to view your frames here. Uh, there's also a play button to the right here, so you can play through your animation. It's important to set your frame rate. By default, it's usually 24. You can animate at 24 frames a second. I prefer 30 and that is pretty much what you need to know you also need to know how to set keyframes which i'll talk you through in a moment so let's get started on your very first animation so what i'd like you to do is a bouncing ball now why would i pick something as simple as a bouncing ball well a lot of beginners they tend to jump in the deep end and they'll they'll go ahead and download a full body rig and they'll try and animate that that's not necessarily the best thing to do as a beginner you want to start small small exercises to build up your animator's eye and to build up your knowledge of the principles of animation these are things like weight timing squash and stretch staging all these things need to be learned before you can start progressing forward so as we move forward in these lessons you will see that i keep referring back to the bouncing ball because there's so much contained in it. So this is what the file will look like when you first open it up. So here we have a very simple ball rig I've made. In the center here, you've got your main NURBS controller. This contro controls all translation and rotation. And at the side here, you've got this smaller one that controls the squash and stretch by moving it up and down. Now you'll see up on the right here, this gives you the numbers of how much the ball is moving. Okay, so as you move up, you'll see the numbers here increase. Um, so what we're going to start to do is rough out what we call our keyframes. Okay, now what our keyframes are, are the main poses in the animation. What we're going to do is have the ball start up in the air. And then you press the S key to set a key. You see down here it's added a little red tick to indicate a keyframe. Now we're going to move down to, say, frame 10. Have the ball drop down to the floor and set another key. If you prefer not to keep hammering on the S key, you can go down to this button here and turn on and off auto key. And basically what that means is you can just move the ball around and it will automatically set keys. Really up to you. I prefer auto key. Um, just out of habit now especially with full body characters it's just very handy sometimes you can spend you know 10 minutes posing out of character and you forget to set it, uh, press the s key and you lose all that work so out of habit i just prefer to have auto key on okay let's carry on uh, so let's go up to say frame 19 and set our next key up in the air and it's slightly lower than our first frame Okay, let's go to say frame 27, bring it back down, uh, come up again, and back down. Okay, let's just 
scrub through that, see how that feels. So you want a gradual decrease in height. Okay. If you notice as well, I'm also compressing how much time is in between these slightly. You want to allow more time for the first few bounces because they're going to be higher. And as the ball starts to lose momentum, these bounces are going to get smaller and smaller. So therefore the timing is also going to get smaller and smaller. Okay, so towards the end, let's just add a couple more little bounces. Like so. Okay, so that's the keyframe set. Let's play it and see how it feels. Okay, so you'll notice a few things. When the ball is dropped, this is all okay. As soon as it comes towards the floor, it starts to slow down. Now this isn't a flying ball, okay, it doesn't know the floor is about to impact with it, so we're going to need to go and fix that. So we're going to open up the graph editor. So if you go up to Windows, Animation Editors, Graph Editor, okay, this is a graph representation of what's going on in the animation. Now you need to have a controller selected for this to display. So whichever controller you've got selected will load into this. So let's select our main controller. Let's select our translate Y, which is the up and down curve of this ball. So you'll see here, as we scrub along, it gives you a nice graph to see exactly what's going on with the animation. First of all, let's fix this issue of the ball anticipating the floor. See the way it slows into the floor here? This is wrong. Firstly, what we're gonna do is set keys to linear. So if you go up to this button here, like so, and this will give us a far better shape, closer to what we need. So I'm just gonna play that. So you'll see already, as the ball approaches the floor, it keeps going at the speed and then bounces off in a much more convincing way. Now what we want to do is add some hang time. We want to allow this ball a bit more time up in the air. There's two ways of doing this. I'm going to show you weighted tangents way. Okay. So you select all your top keyframes like so. You can then go up to curves, weighted tangents. This changes the way these top tangents work. So you see you have these handles here now. With these handles, you're able to individually select them and middle mouse button drag them out. So this allows more time up the top. So I'm just going to go through all the top keyframes and give them a bit more time. Like so. The navigation of the graph editor works in a similar manner to the viewport. You hold Alt and middle mouse button, so you're able to move about. You're able to zoom out using the right button and Alt, similar to the viewport. And Alt and left click doesn't do anything. Okay, so now we've done that, let's give this a play, see how it feels. Okay, so you see already that's starting to feel a lot more convincing. There's a lot more weight in the ball. If you want to make further edits to these bottom tangents to really sort of push this bounce off the floor. You see if I try and move this it moves both together. So what we can do is break these tangents. So if you select your keyframe, so let's do all the bottom ones because it's easier to do. And if you select this button here that breaks the tangents. Now what this allows is now I can move each one individually and really control that bottom part. So we want a very clean, nice shape. Okay, let's give that a play. So those are our keyframes set now. Now I'm going to teach you something called squash and stretch. Now what is squash and stretch? Uh, it comes from 2D animation and uh, early Disney days. And what the animators discovered was you can get a lot more life into your animation if you actually 
squash and stretch your characters in certain places. So if during a fast movement you stretch the character out along the line of action, then it gives a, an illusion of you know dynamic. It's it's kind of like doing a smear frame. Um, so we can build some of that into this uh, to give it more life. Okay, so we're going to select our squash and stretch controller. You use this by translating up and down here. So the idea here is when the ball is at the top, it's going to be a ball shape. So we're going to set a key on one. Now, as the ball falls, the faster and faster it gets, we're going to stretch it out like so. It's a maximum stretch just before it hits the floor. Okay. Now, at the moment of impact, which will be this frame here, we're going to squash it down. Maybe not too far, maybe something like that. So you'll see now as it falls, stretch, 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 squash. And after this, we're going to stretch it up to full again. So as it comes towards the floor, you get this lovely bounce that just adds a lot of life to this. So we're just going to go through the entire animation like this and add squash and stretch to it. So here's the final result after adding squash and stretch. As you can see, adding squash and stretch just makes it so much more interesting to look at. Yeah, so much more appealing, you know. There's a lot more character built into the ball. Even though it's an inanimate object, it still feels interesting to look at. So to quickly summarize this lesson, we've gone over the basics of Maya navigation. Uh, we've gone over how to set keyframes. Uh, we've gone over the basics of the graph editor, how to use that and manipulate tangents. And we've started to introduce the concepts of weight and timing and squash and stretch, which we will build upon in future lessons. In the next lesson, we're going to be looking at a slightly more advanced bouncing ball. So it's going to be moving across the screen. So we're going to be dealing with arcs. So I'm really looking forward to teaching you guys how important arcs are in animation. So guys, I really hope you enjoyed that lesson and I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you for watching.